Language literacy and numeracy issues have been a concern in VET. Here's a timeline as early as about the 1990s. There is undeniable evidence to demonstrate that poor communication skills adversely affect productivity in the workplace. Now back then, it was just a general gut feel about the communication ability, the writing, the reading, the oral communication of, of workers in the workplace. Moving forward to about 1993, the levels and types of English language and literacy required in modern Australian society have increased dramatically. Economic restructuring has placed heavy demands on skills and on education and training programs to develop those skills. So English language lit and literacy is fundamental to the whole of the education and training effort. So here now we're moving from skill gaps in the 1990s to a focus on, right, trainers and assessors in the VET system, you guys are training our, our workplace skills and knowledge, so the onus is now moving and shifting to you to support their, their language and literacy. Now a big jump to 2008 and the then Minister for Education, Julia Gillard, um, makes this comment. We're living in a time of skill shortages arising from demographic and technological change. So from 1993 to 2008, with um, the internet, uh, with a globalised economy, um, you know, we, we have such radical technological change. So we'll continue on. And the proportion of jobs requiring vocational education and training qualifications is expected to significantly increase in the future. Yet the capacity of many individuals to reskill and upskill is hampered by their language literacy and numeracy. Okay, so we've projected what the needs are in the future, and these needs are occurring because we're comp we're competing in a globalized world. Okay, as other organisations overseas are innovating, they're using technology more, um, you know, the, the knowledge jobs, the, the way to improve things, to analyse, to measure, you know, to record performance measures out there in business. Um, you know, there isn't the pick and pack jobs anymore because that's moving to robotics. That's what um, is discussed here about technological change. So, you know, as we move forward into the future, we need a workforce that is a knowledge workforce um, with a highly developed skills workforce. And when they're training, they really need to be able to communicate that they understand, they need to be able to take in knowledge. And that's us now. This is the dilemma now. How are we going to deliver our training? We might have to change the levels of reading. We might have to simplify the language in the written information that we're providing. Do we need to provide written information? Is it something now with changing technology that we can provide in recorded lectures like the one you're listening to now? This way, see, even in this lecture, if you weren't able to read or or have the numeracy skills to follow logically that timeline. And believe me, there is people out there that can't. They at least can be reached by this YouTube lecture and be able to listen and understand and take in the issues and, and where we're going. And this is what this elective unit is about. So here's a bit of a history. You might want to pause this. Some people like to look quite deeply. It won't be required as part of your evidence, but some people do appreciate deeper reading. So all I really want everyone to look at here is there's been quite a lot of official papers, 1990, 93, 2010, yeah, quite a few recent ones there as well, 2008. So what we're seeing is evidence of a national concern, quite a lot of government bodies, industry bodies that are releasing these official papers from studies that they have done or funded. Uh, but bottom line is there's issues with literacy and numeracy uh, and language and you know we have to turn to VET to address that. In 2006 I want to bring your attention to um, a survey 
uh, that stated that 7 million Australians can't meet the demands of everyday life and work. 7 million. Now that's not just in their workplace, but that's in their everyday life. And that was a literacy demand. 2 million working aged Australians had the lowest levels of literacy. Now at the lowest levels of literacy, that isn't meeting the demands of everyday life. In numeracy, 8 million did not meet the minimum numeracy requirements for work and everyday life and 3 million scored at the lowest levels of numeracy. So there's a difference between um, the demands of everyday work and life needs, which you'll learn is a level 3, and a level 1, which is the lowest level. That That's quite a you know concerning dysfunctional level of literacy and numeracy. So we've responded in the VET system. This is just a quick overview of a paper that was released by the Industry Skills Council. So the Industry Skills Council is 11 council bodies. Um, so all over Australia your workplaces and businesses would fit into one of 11 industries and they're supported by um, a, a body who can conduct research and provide support and strategic ideas of what's required within that industry into the future to compete and be able to sustain as a business in this globalised competitive world. So this paper, No More Excuses, basically draws to employers' attention and trainers in the VET system's attention about these, you know, these statistics, these very alarming language literacy and numeracy statistics. So you know, uh, up the top here, inadequately prepared workforce, limited access to language literacy and numeracy expertise, that there is an ageing workforce, but that ageing workforce has to respond to an increasing use of technology. That there's more compliance, there's a lot more formalised auditing going on in the workplace, this compliance requirement. So, you know, even your middle management with their reading and writing, their oral communication skills, their numeracy to be able to interpret performance graphs and create performance measures for the staff of that middle management to be able to monitor that and interpret the graphs and the performance measures as an example. And of course there's a demand for these higher skill levels. And it says around half the working age Australians, half, half of working Australians have language literacy and numeracy problems. All right, so 53% of working age Australians have the numeracy issues. 46%, 46% of adults have difficulty with reading and 13% are classified in the lowest. So remember it wasn't just functional every day, which you'll learn is a level three, but the lowest literacy category. The uh, industry Council IBSA, the Innovation and Business Skills Australia, they're the industry body that uh, that creates the training and education package which your certificate for in training and assessment is written from. So they've responded. Uh, the um, elective unit that you're undertaking now will be a core unit as part of Certificate 4 in Training and Assessment from July 2014. Now there is a grace period for about a year until 2015 for that, but basically from July 2014 all trainers and assessors who hold the current certification, Certificate 4 in Training and Assessment as a minimum qualification as a trainer in the VET system, must then add this elective to their qualification to remain a trainer and assessor. So that's how IBSA has responded to this language literacy and numeracy need. So when the training package is revised in July 2014, all new and existing trainers will need to hold or demonstrate equivalent competency for the unit. So people can either do a, a formalised course such as this 
or be able to demonstrate to the RTO that they work for that they can apply these types of skills and knowledge. They'll have to show their RTO evidence that they can tap into LLN experts, that they can respond to a learner with language literacy and numeracy needs. So it's certainly much more efficient for you to be given access to that type of information for such a small investment of time and money and that way you know you're ticking off all the boxes. So in review, you'll have a question there. What is driving the unit, TAE LLN 401A, to become a core unit in the Certificate for in Training and Assessment? So from this YouTube clip, and there's some guided information there if you want to pause this video, uh, you know, basically you would need to respond as evidence of your knowledge now that the Industry Skills Councils responded to data you know, really alarming data on the poor language literacy and numeracy levels of the Australian workforce. IBSA uh, requires all trainers and assessors to have competency from July 2014 in this unit. Something to that effect would be quite satisfactory 